I have so many em oceans, but those are my current feelings. I beat you won't like it, but you'll have to see for yourself. With the water raging debate of what is the greatest body of water, one of those greatest debates is lakes versus oceans. Now, where do I stand on this? Well, if you read the title, I'm gonna have to tip my hat to Team Lake. I'm gonna step into the ring and be on the side of lakes and tell you exactly why lakes are better than oceans. Welcome to my channel where I take on different challenges and adventures. I tell my personal thoughts and experiences and hopefully that encourages you to try on new adventures yourself. Now that sounds like something that uh, floats your boat. Maybe consider liking and subscribing, but let's talk about lakes versus oceans. Now which darn lakes and oceans am I talking about? Now this is completely a biased review. I'm taking a stance on lakes based on my personal experiences. There's no such thing as an unbiased review. I'm basically telling you why I, myself, prefer lakes over oceans. Well, I grew up near the Great Lakes as a proud Canadian myself. The city that I grew up was on the coast of Lake Ontario. My entire childhood was on that lake. The other lakes we visited is Lake Erie as well as Lake Huron, but mostly Lake Ontario. The greatest of Great Lakes. For on the ocean, I'm comparing it to the Pacific Ocean. I've spent many years now living in Vancouver and British Columbia. So the Pacific Ocean on the West Coast, going all the way from Vancouver, all the way up to about Squamish and Whistler. Got a lot of time on that salty, salty ocean. But let's get into the reasons why lakes are better than oceans. Let's get the main one out of the way, the salt water. Obviously the ocean is full of salt. When you dive in headfirst into that salty, salty body of water, you can taste it in uh, Salt water, it's disgusting. You can't drink that. I mean, you're not going swimming to get hydrated, but oh, that disgusting taste of that salt. The Great Lakes, it is super clean. You could drink that sucker of water if you really, really wanted to. In fact, the lakes are so clean, you can drink with absolutely no side effects. I drank from the lake and look at me. Speaking of salt, you get those small white powdery suckers all over your body, on your hair, on your skin, you have to go and take a shower after anyways. The Great Lakes are so clean that depending on your hygiene habits, you could exit the lake cleaner than when you entered it. Saving a step on your nightly routine, if you're a night shower, bather, people prefer baths over showers, different debate. And like lakes are way safer. On oceans, you know what you gotta worry about? Hurricanes, tsunamis, typhoons. We have not been hit by a typhoon during my lifetime, but it is way more of a possibility. The fact that it did happen, it can happen. Just like in 2016, when you had the typhoon Songda, Songda, am I saying that right? The good news is that it was mostly high winds and property damage and not a lot of loss of lives, which is good. But the fact that it happened again, you can worry about that. The Great Lakes, you're not really worrying about that. And the water itself on the oceans, are out to get you. You don't trust those. You can't just go swimming anywhere in the ocean. You have things like the powerful waves that'll just push you and just rock you. They will, they will rock you. There are underwater currents that depending on where you are and the geography, it can just suck you right down, right to the bottom. And not like in a fun scuba diving way. And then there are rip currents, powerful channeled currents that can drag swimmers out into the water. Boogie. Woogie! I've never had to deal with that growing up. I've never heard stories about this. With the oceans, you hear about that all the time. And I don't know that, there are creatures in the oceans that basically want to take your life. You gotta worry about shark, you gotta worry about jellyfishes, even just crabs, snip, snip, snippy boys. And lakes, you don't have to worry about that. There are no hitman fish that have contracts that are out to get you. You can just enjoy it and feel safe. And to be honest, Water sports are more enjoyable on lakes. Because there are no huge waves, there are no those huge powerful currents that will take you out and not like on a nice date. All those factors combined gets you a more enjoyable, relaxed and simple experience when it comes to a lot of water sports. Especially if you're trying to learn them, especially as a beginner. I remember a lot of these water sports I learned on a lake and is very, very family friendly out on the lake. Here is a list of water sports that are more enjoyable on the lake. Kayaking, canoeing, boating, windsurfing, sailing, paddleboarding, jet skiing, water skiing, wakeboarding, tubing, and there's more. You can have these 
family friendly adventures. I learned most of these sports on a lake. But yeah, oceans have the advantages because of the waves and because of the wind, things such as regular surfing. But on lakes, you don't lose that. There are specific spots and there are specific conditions in which the winds and the waves are very, very strong. Just on the Great Lakes, you're not losing that option. You are gaining more options. And what about the basic reason why you're going in the water in the first place? It's swimming. That's people what are doing a lot, right? They swim. So am I swimming with a gun? But that is the most basic thing that people go to the body of water for, is swimming. And with the lake, you can actually do that without all these concerns. And you can swim out almost as far as you want. However, in the oceans, that is something you always have to keep in mind, always have to think about. And you can't really get that far without having to like I said, worry about a bunch of other issues. And what about the cost of the cash, cash money of oceans versus lakes? Oceans are just too damn high. Let's talk about boats. Now, obviously there are lots of boats on the ocean. You know, people love to boat on the ocean. The difference is on the oceans, that's basically a rich person thing. That's a luxury thing because of the cost of the boats for the harbor and all the other fees that it has to take for you to have a boat on that water itself. For Great Lakes, you can be a middle class or a weekend warrior and you don't have to be in debt to just be on the water. On the Great Lakes, it isn't a luxury, it's a lifestyle. And maybe you don't want to own a boat, but renting and doing these other activities that you have to pay for are actually cheaper around lakes. Because of the density of the population and how widespread you can be on the lake, these businesses are usually a lot cheaper. Meaning, just like I mentioned before, if you want to rent a kayak, a canoe, a paddleboard, sailing, water skiing, all of those in which you have to rent, it will be cheaper around a lake. You know how I love those sweet, sweet deals. Lakes got you covered. And now housing. You can actually afford and live around a lake. There are so much space around the lake and there are so many houses that you can actually live on. No, if you're thinking of living on the lake near a city like Toronto, you're probably not gonna have that happen. But if you look at the full geography of the likelihood of you living in an actual city, actually on the lake, especially if you are a lover of water sports, you can actually do that. You can live in a nice little quaint lake town like a retirement town. There are even people who have second homes or cottages because they can afford that. And an ocean, good luck. Good luck owning a home in a big city that is near an ocean. And now right on the edge of the ocean, ooh, good luck. You're basically gonna have to be able to print money in order to afford that kind of luxury. Ooh, cash, 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 cash money. Let's talk about the beaches, the popularity, and the density of lakes versus oceans. Look, our beaches are just way less crowded. There's a good chance that you're gonna be able to find your own special little luxurious spot on the Great Lakes. And the oceans, good luck with that. At least a spot that you don't have to climb through a bunch of forest and rocks. Because ocean cities, you're usually dealing with a big major city. Just like here, the Pacific Ocean, you're probably dealing with Vancouver. And if you're not dealing with that and you're looking for a quaint little side, you're gonna have to deal with the popularity, how many people are there, and traffic itself. That means public transportation. That means high traffic. And you're dealing with the amounts of people that are just there. And don't get me started on ocean parking. The parking lots around the oceans, you're going to be dealing with that so much. They're going to be full. You're going to try to find spots. You're probably going to have to park extremely far away and do a mini marathon just to get to your spot. That's probably going to be full of people anyways. Around lakes, there's so many just simple parks that you're going to find around the lakes. Where I grew up, off of Lake Ontario, there was a park that was just 10 minutes walk from my house. It was never full, but I could just walk there and do water things on the lake. Go swimming, kayaking, paddleboarding, doesn't matter. It was right there and I didn't have to deal with so many people. And the Great Lakes have more sand. You can actually find more beaches. If you like your toes in the sand and you like sweater weather, you got it. You got it. Then you're going to find more beaches that aren't as full on the Great Lakes. And the sand dunes, oh, they're amazing. These giant dunes of sand. Oh, great explanation. They're vast, they're huge, and they're so fun. They're hills of sand. And you can find those all the way around the Great Lakes. Some of those final thoughts are just gonna rabble, rabble on. Is this biased? Yeah, completely biased, 100%. And nostalgia plays a huge part of it. I grew up against a lake. 
The fact that I grew up with it and got to experience so much childhood moments on the lake. Now, I love oceans, of course I do. But for me, just because of that nostalgia, it has to give a little edge to lakes. It's just like your favorite music. There's a good chance that you're gonna think the greatest music of all time is probably between when you were 12 to about 17. That's gonna be your greatest generation. And it's mostly because of nostalgia. And I haven't seen all bodies of water. Some people can defend pools. Some people can defend seas. Hmm, I see your sea and seas for cooking. That's good enough for me. Like maybe I'll defend oceans next time, which I think my girlfriend would really, really like because she loves oceans. See, she's 100% on Team Ocean. I think she's gonna be watching this video and looking at all the points that I have made and is gonna try to tear them apart to make sure that I'm also on Team Oceans. But same thing for her, she grew up with oceans, especially on the coast of Brazil. Seeing that these are these amazing oceans and I haven't experienced those yet. Maybe I'll experience those and change my mind. But there are pros and cons to both and I just have to acknowledge that and accept that. Now, if you wanna save money on your next adventure, I have links down below to Airbnb and Groupon. You can click those links and that will help for you on your next adventure. But that is my experience. What do you think? What team are you on? Are you on Team Lakes? Are you Team Oceans? It's not really one that's better than the other, but there's clearly one that's better than the other. And which one is that? You can definitely let me know down in the comments below, or you can hit me up on social media, and I will see, <laughs> see you at the next adventure.